Live from the boxing capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada, Crown Boxing presents The Legend Returns, the World Boxing Federation Heavyweight Championship, Evander Holyfield versus Franz Botha. And Franz Botha makes the long walk in down the corridors here at the Thomas and Mack Center where some of the greatest fighters in the history of boxing have taken the same walk before. Franz Botha with four losses, his last two losses to Klitschko, no complaint there, and Lennox Lewis. This guy has fought all comers. He's a warrior. He loves to fight in his time off from boxing. He's been involved in kickboxing and MMA. This is a guy who really enjoys what he's doing. And he's not out here for money. He's out for the joy of competing. And tonight, we're going to get to see Franz Botha go up against Evander Holyfield. And one of the things that Botha does bring into this fight is a four-fight win streak. No, it's not against uh, the absolute top competition in the heavyweight division. Uh, it's against some journeyman fighters. But what it does is show a kind of an activity uh, and the fact that he's still viable as a heavyweight. And you mentioned his toughness, going off and fighting K-1, uh, kickboxing and mixed martial arts uh, in a foreign country. It shows the grittiness that he has. He is a very dangerous fighter for at least five or six rounds. Now, he's had better moments in later rounds in some fights, but in truth, you know, the second half of fight's not as good for him, but for the first five or six rounds, he's a fighter who can make things very difficult for anyone, as he did against Mike Tyson, one of the common opponents between these two. Well, as you say, France both a very, very effective for five or six rounds. The problem is 12 rounds. Now, the other question is, how will Evander Holyfield, at 47 years of age, handle 12 rounds of fighting? Yeah, we're going to, that's also an issue, but... But he will, he will, he's done it in his last two fights. And what are the keys to victory for Franz Botha as he steps into the ring and gets ready to face Evander Holyfield? He's a fighter who certainly, as we said, uh, aggressive in the early part of the, uh, of the fight and will try and do that. So part of it is he's got to, I think use his jab effectively against Evander Holyfield uh, and keep win the battle of the jabs early. I think he's got to get on the inside against Holyfield and rough him up, and he's got to land the overhand right, if at all possible. And Frank Luca, matchmaker, talking to Franz Botha, and he does everything you want for a fighter leading up to a fight. Very accessible, a charming character. Yeah, he's been a great person in the lead up to this fight to be around, always the case with him. Affable, uh, congenial, but there's an edge to this guy, and that's oh. why he's a boxer, and it's why he went into MMA, and that's what we're hoping will emerge in this fight as well, and he says it will. Well, he's a fighter, though he hasn't had the big, big wins, has fought everyone that, that wants to fight him, and again, with four losses, all with world champions, that's a guy who can fight. And we take a look at Evander, the real deal, Holyfield, coming out and that's a face, Al, that even if you're the most casual boxing fan, you know him. He has been one of the great heavyweights of all time, a four-time world champion, walking down the top of some back. He first walked down this hallway back in 1992 against Riddick Bowe. And that was a fight, as I mentioned at the top of the show, that kind of stamped the career of Evander Holyfield. He fought a much bigger man, fought gallantly, lost the fight and I'll never forget the moment of being back in that dressing room with him I did that broadcast and he was sitting down against the wall on the ground and I had to sit down with him to do the interview and it was just a fallen warrior but you knew that his spirit was not dampened and that was a long time ago and here he is still participating in the heavyweight division and still anxious to get a chance to win and here's the point and i know people will criticize him fighting at 47 maybe justifiably so but here are two facts he fought sultan abragamov a couple years ago and went 12 rounds with him pushed abragamov in the last round 
and just a year or so ago fought Nikolai Valuev, who was the heavyweight champion, really won that fight. And the fans giving Evander Holyfield some love here at the Thomas and Mack. And in the Bragamoff fight in particular, that's a fight where he came in strong at the end. The Valuev fight, I think most 90% of people who saw that fight said he came away with it. So he still has a lot of tools in his tool bag at the age of 47. And I think the key is against a Botha, two fighters toward the end of their career, we expect it to be entertaining, to be perfectly candid. I, I expect them to throw punches and make it interesting. We'll see if they do, and we hope they do. This crowd. Up and for the moment. And you take a look at just in the last 15 minutes, this arena has changed. The energy yep. levels coming up. Thousands of people clearly buying their tickets at uh, right before fight time. This is a great atmosphere. And now we take it up to ring announcer Jake Gutierrez. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we wish to honor America with our national anthem. Would everyone please rise and gentlemen, remember to remove your caps. Here to sing our national anthem, please welcome Miss Joey Fulco. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars. Take it up to Jake Gutierrez at ringside. Ladies and gentlemen, Crown Boxing, a Frank Luca matchmaker, and the Thomas and Mack Center are proud to present our featured belt of the evening. It's scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing for the WBF Heavyweight Championship of the World. This bout is sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. The chairman is Pat Lundvall. The executive director is Keith Kaiser. Commissioners are Francisco Aguilar, Skip Avancino, Bill Brady, and T.J. Day. Also, this bout is sanctioned by the WBF. The WBF supervisor is Howard Goldberg. Positions at ringside. The lead is Dr. Anthony Ruggeroli, assisted by Dr. Rodney Corson, Dr. Michael Gunter, and Dr. Vicky Mazzarana. Our timekeepers this evening will be Steve Esposito and Ernie Howdigy. The three judges scoring this bout will be Glenn Feldman, Jerry Roth, and Herb Santos. And when the action starts, the man in charge, referee Russell Mora. 
And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the Thomas and Mack Center, right here in exciting Las Vegas, Nevada, it's time for the Leather to Fly. This is the main event. <laughs> Introducing first, he fights out of the red corner. He entered the ring wearing the black trunks, and he weighed in at 250 pounds. His professional record, 47 victories with only four defeats, three draws, including 28 big wins by knockout. Originally from Whitback Mpumalanga, South Africa, he now makes his home in Newport Beach, California. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the current and defending WBF heavyweight champion of the world, Francois, the White Buffalo Bolta. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner. He's wearing the white trunks, and he weighed in at 220 pounds. His record, 42 victories, 10 defeats, and two draws, 27 big wins by knockout. Coming to us from Atlanta, Georgia, introducing the former three-time cruiserweight champion of the world and the only four-time heavyweight champion of the world, Evander, the real deal, Holy Field! I want to remind you that I expect a clean fight. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. God bless. Touch up. Touch up. We take a look at the how these fighters stack up. Clearly, they are very similar in some of their numbers, the height and reach. And uh, obviously, both is a lot bigger. He wants to use that girth on the inside. Franz Botha will come out very aggressive. Evander Holyfield, the more cerebral of the two fighters. Evander in the white trunks. Franz Botha in the black trunks. We mentioned Botha normally in early rounds is a little bit more effective. There's the overhead right, right away. If you're Franz Botha, good idea. Get your best weapon out there as quickly as you can in this fight. Evander Holyfield, a much lighter fight, has gotten heavier as the years have gone on, but still superbly conditioned yep. at just 220 pounds over a 6'2 and three quarter frame. And still a small heavyweight by today's standards. No question. And never the big power punch that you'd like in a heavyweight. Well, he knocked many heavyweights out, but he does it with a series of punches. Now, early in this fight, I would expect Holyfield to establish his jab a little bit to try it. Holyfield stepping inside, using that left. Both of punching out of the clutch with a little right uppercut. Both are holding very effectively on the inside not allowing Holyfield to work and then landing that uppercut. Oh, the big right hand by Franz Botha. To the body, a monstrous right hand. This is when Botha, as we said, is dangerous in fights. In these early rounds, he did it against Mike Tyson. He's done it against other heavyweights where he has shown his power. Ultimately, Tyson was able to get him out of there. Of course, one of the common opponents the two men have, also Lennox Lewis, who um, beat Franz Botha and had a draw and... Uh, also beat Holyfield once. Even in a clinch, that right hand of Botha is super powerful. It's like a pile driver. You can feel the power of the heavyweights punching at ringside. <laughs> Botha just kind of clubbed Holyfield <laughs> on the head with both hands. That was an odd maneuver. Haven't Bo seen that a lot. No. Botha, for round one, for whatever it's worth, for this round, Botha has completely imposed his will physically on Holyfield. Holyfield missing with a wild left hook. Both are doing a much better job in the close course fighting. Evander not really usurping his will in terms of using that jab and keeping both away. And Holyfield kind of willing to, to, to muscle on the inside. There again, cuffing the head of... What, what is it about Evander Holyfield's ears in Las Vegas? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's that not Easter. so odd. It's an illegal maneuver by Botha, and it's strange. <laughs> I, I, I don't remember seeing him do that in the past. 
He did it again. He's going to get a warning here. I don't know what that's about. Is it, it may be... Is that it psychological? may be a reaction to him being worried about Holyfield using his head. Because let's face it, people have accused Evander Holyfield of it before, and it has happened. That but is... That was an odd, very odd maneuver. Boy, and to do it three times. Yeah, after being warned once. Tommy Brooks, by the way, the trainer in the corner with Evander Holyfield. A wonderful trainer, one of the best in boxing. As we take a look at activity from round number one. Both uh, using his jab on the outside. There's the overhand right that he landed early in the round. And you made a very good point about Holyfield using his head to his advantage. As we take a look at the clutch there. And that's a spot where you can get hurt. Nice uppercut on the inside by Franz Bothan. Uh, He's landed three of those in round number one as we take a look at the four-time heavyweight champion of the world, Evander Holyfield. Round number two coming up next. This is scheduled for 12 rounds in the heavyweight division from Las Vegas, Nevada. And other than the three strange instances with Bofa, he controlled, for the most part, the first round. You see Bofa holding that arm. He may get a point deduction for that at some point. That was a legal right hand by Bofa because they weren't broken by Mora. And Botha, as you mentioned, really usurping Holyfield, his will coming out. Holyfield being aggressive, using that body. And even though he's in a clutch, Botha managing to get some shots in. Well, Vander needs to do a better job of tying him up. Well, it's Botha doing the tying up on the inside, and, and he's creating a situation where he can land some punches. The Holyfield jab has yet, not yet become a big right ball. hand. Was bowling? Oh, Holyfield takes another right. Boy, that is just a uh, steel driving punch of both of that right hand. Very effective. And if Evander Holyfield wasn't in such great condition, those body shots would be extracting more of a toll. Well, they may as this fight continues if both can keep sustain this over a longer period of uh, this fight. Halfway through round number two of a 12-round scheduled heavyweight fight. France Botha in the black trunks. Evander Holyfield fighting off his heels in the white trunks. Those are good body punches by Botha. And if Evander Holyfield, you know, in his last two fights, I mentioned, there's a good right by Holyfield, that he did fairly well against the Bragamoff, and then, of course, in spots, fought very well against Valuev. And part of it was Valuev not doing anything. Both are much more aggressive than either Abragamov or Valuev against Holyfield early in this fight. And that's giving Evander issues. And a much stronger puncher than either of those fighters. Well, you know, I, maybe, yeah, arguably, probably is. You traveled all the way to the Soviet Union for the... I understand you were on the 18-hour Soviet Union... Or Russia, excuse me, to be correct. Got there in the afternoon and uh, because of missed flights and had to leave that night, but... <laughs> It was an intriguing situation. Both uh, again controlling this round and uh, managing to avoid fouls as well. And in a 12 round fight, two rounds not as important, but nonetheless a start that both have really wanted to have. Nice overhand right by Evander Holyfield. And you're right, he'd like a start like this, both. And the body work's been really impressive by Franz Botha. Surprisingly, I think. You mentioned that both is one of those fighters who comes out and is great, typically in the first five or six rounds. He's done a good job through two rounds at Las Vegas, Nevada. We take a look at Evander in his corner. His team probably talking to him about establishing that jab and, and start to show a little bit more ring generalship. He seems to be letting the big fella both take the fight to him. Well, and one of the things that it's, it happens when you're an older fighter, he's having a little bit of a hard time putting his punches together. That was always the strength of Evander Holyfield before. There's the overhand right that was his best moment in the last round. And the body work of both of them. And the right hand that I don't think it really hurt Holyfield, but just kind of pushed him off balance. Is that his moniker a pretty accurate run, the White Buffalo? Yes. 
he shows very little quit. <coughs> Both fighters with biblical uh, references on their shorts. They're not showing a lot of... Uh, Biblical nature here. They're both going at it pretty strong. Franz Botha in the black trunks. Vander Holyfield in the white trunks with purple piping. And Holyfield coming forward. And you could feel like he wants to establish his jab and throw some combinations. Just hasn't been able to do it. And both are really holding on the inside. And that's something that at some point Russell Mora may take a look at. Russell Mora having issues with both in the first round for that ear slapping. That went away in round two, thankfully. There's a rabbit punch by both. We saw that in a fight with a couple of veterans a week or so ago, and it wasn't very becoming. That was the Jones Hopkins fight. Both his but, game plan is very simple. Throw punches, tie him up, throw punches, tie him up. He and does not want to let Evander get off any combinations. And so far, that game plan has been effective, and he's executed it very well. Yeah, he really has. And on the inside, both is doing a pretty good job of working to the body as well. And you mentioned that we don't know what toll that will extract from Holyfield as the night goes on. 12 rounds is a lot of boxing, 36 minutes if this thing goes the limit. Well, I think it's kind of a race in time. There's the question of Holyfield's age, although he went 12 rounds in his last two fights, and there's the question of both as normal fading after six or seven rounds. So which will be more likely? We'll see. We're seeing two arcs coming together. Both, Both is, a, yeah, oh, interesting. Sorry. He's almost like a, a tennis player. He grunts as he comes in and kind of forecasts. But when he lands that first shot, he steps in, and you're exactly right, tries to tie Holyfield up. The both the right hand, not quite as accurate as it was in the first two rounds. Nice left hook by both that gets in. Both and that another working to the body. That is not a punch, friends. Both hardly ever throws. So that's a surprise. Evander tying up both. Do you think his work in MMA and kickboxing has been advantageous in terms of his balance? You know, I... I as it, Rollerfield lands that good right hand, I'm not sure it's helped balance. It's just an indication of his toughness, and I think he never uh, bought into that in terms of all the technique. It was more as a tough guy. And tough guy he's got in spades. And a nice flurry to end round number three. So we took a look at Franz Botha in the corner. Through nine minutes of boxing, he looks to be in pretty darn good shape. Now in, in a Vander's corner. Also not breathing heavy. Here is both uh, attacking, and he had landed a decent left hand there. He, he landed a, a couple of other left hooks that were effective. And that's the Holyfield right hand that from the last round that was significant. But not a lot of power behind it. Not a lot. Push that punch a little bit. And again, there's Tommy Brooks uh, working with him in the corner. Tim Hallmark, his condition trainer also. And when we talked to Tim the other day, he said uh, he feels Evander is physically ready for this fight, but... It's not been that active so far. Round number four. This is a scheduled 12 rounder. It's the main event. 12 rounds of heavyweight action. Trip Mitchell, Al Bernstein calling the action from ringside. Glad to have you with you from all over the world on our pay per view broadcast tonight. Hope you're enjoying the action. Holyfield showing some good quickness despite the fact he's 47 years old. Came in at 220 pounds, a good weight for him. Both of weighing in at 250 pounds. Really the fight going all both his way so far through three rounds of action. Holyfield, you know, as he was in his recent fights, not wildly active. 
And that, of course, there's some nice work on the inside by Holyfield. That's the best left we've seen yeah. out of that clutch. Absolutely. Best probably do have two best left hooks he's thrown in this fight. Now, Holyfield had all kinds of uh, shoulder issues that made it impossible almost for him to throw his signature left hook. His shoulder is much, much better, and he can throw that left hook. He just needs to unload it a bit. And when Botha throws that right, he totally commits to it. He is throwing yes. everything after that punch. Botha with his hands down, kind of a unique style. Holyfield, much more classic style, hands up. And it'll be interesting to see if Holyfield can continue and throw some good punches out of the clutch. You know, both of that jab is very, very quick. Holyfield with a good reach advantage so far has not established that jab. And you see both of when he goes to work, he goes, hits the body. The lack of activity by Holyfield hurting him very badly in these rounds. Again, he's not pressuring both. And part of the reason why both of may uh, have those lapses after the fifth, six rounds of fights is if you push him. But if you don't push him, then he may not. And you had mentioned earlier in the fight that Holyfield needs those combinations to wear, to wear his opponents down, and he's not getting away with that. He's throwing just isolated punches. He is a right hand by... Finally a nice right by Holyfield. Yeah, after a right hand by Botha. Botha now backing himself in against the ropes a little bit. And the holding now, I think an issue. Uh, Botha doing a lot of holding on the inside, and I think Russell Mora may look at that. Russell Moore, a very, very experienced referee with lots of title fights in his pocket. Despite the volleys, no fighter really looking like he's been hurt. Four rounds of boxing. France both is starting to look a little winded. Well, both fighters in Shuk, you know, we have 40-plus heavyweights here, so both 40-plus, <laughs> and we'll be obviously monitoring that very carefully. And as we look back, the uh, clubbing right hand, but that was the counter right hand that Holyfield landed that was a very good straight right hand. Though, in truth, not causing much of a problem for both of them. No, and the big issue for Evander Holyfield right now is his lack of number of punches. And he has to feel like this fight has not started out the way he wanted. Now maybe his strategy is to tire Botha out and use his, his conditioning to improve as we get through round 6, 7th, and 8th. But in truth, he's put himself behind in the cards, one would likely think. Vander Holyfield coming in as a four-time world champion, Franz Botha, a game fighter who's gone up against some of the best over the last two decades of heavyweight fighting. Round number five, 12 rounds of heavyweight fighting from the Thomas & Mack in Las Vegas, Nevada. <coughs> Franz Botha with a smile on his face. There's that overhand right, and then a right hand to the body strayed low, and another one strays low. Boy, and it, it almost seemed like Holyfield stepped into that punch that was going wild and took some of the brunt. Both are continuing to tie up Holyfield and getting that warning that both fighters that you talked about. Both fighters a little wild with their punches. Both of landing, excuse me, Holyfield landing a nice right hand. That was a good combination, the jab and the right that followed it. Both of committing again to the body, which I think is a, a good idea for him. He does drop his hands in that situation. Is that an opportunity for Evander to come in? Well, it would be, but Evander has not been quick, and that was a good right hand again by Botha. Evander with a wild left hand. Holyfield's just kind of lunging and missing with those left hands, and that's, you know. The fans starting to wonder whether Evander is letting this one get away from him. Well, Franz Botha, we mentioned at the top of the show, feeling a bit like an afterthought in some respects. 
he land, just landed a very good right hand. He feels like he's the more active fighter recently, and he feels like there were some edges for him coming into this fight. So he's shown some of that already in this match. Not been a pretty fight by any means. No. But both are extracting a lot of punishment, working the inside, throwing off a flurry of punches and grabbing and clutching. Holyfield doing a better job when he's in tight with both and not letting him get off that right. Yeah, but the problem is Holyfield can't really land anything on the inside because both is holding him so effectively. And this round has been probably the most uh, one-sided of the fight on behalf of both. He's landed good shots from the outside. He's been fairly active, even for, uh, you know, especially for a heavyweight, fairly active. Well, um, and, and maybe that MMA background is helping a little bit in terms of he's doing a great job holding a Vander. <laughs> and uh, if he gets him in a rear naked choke, we know he's going to <laughs> Crowd trying to summon something for Holyfield by chanting his name. And Holyfield steps in. Holyfield always doing a good job in the last five seconds of the round. He needs to mirror that for about another one, 255. <coughs> As we take a look at Franz Botha, he has to be very pleased with the first five rounds of this fight. He's carried it to Holyfield and really gotten his way. See an example of that. The right hand, and that was a good right hand, followed by a right that strayed a little low. And then you'll see another one. Well, we didn't see it there, but he, he threw yet another one to the body. And as I mentioned, Holyfield walked into that right and kind of stunned him. Counter with the right as the fans look on here at ringside. Checking out this heavyweight match. And through five rounds, Evander definitely on his heels. Now, this is a situation that you had mentioned where a lot of times Botha falls off after five or six rounds. Now it's a time to see whether Evander Holyfield can use his will and his tremendous experience to lift himself up and take the fight to Franz Botha. Al, how do you have this scored? So far, to be perfectly frank, I've given every round to Botha. Good shots by Holyfield, though he wants to change that, doesn't he? Boy, and Botha, after getting shot twice, tying him up again. And the holding, I really believe you can make a strong case that Botha might, should be warned and maybe have a point taken away for the holding because he's doing a lot of it. And that doesn't mean he hasn't performed well in this fight. He has, but I think that's been part of the, one of the factors. Holyfield coming out seems like a re-energized fighter through the first... 50 seconds of round number six. Well, it's almost as if he knows the script as well as everybody else. When you get to this part in the fight, often Franz Botha has some issues. And let's see if Holyfield has that in his mind. It looks like it in this round. And you're in a situation where Holyfield is, is almost taking those holds and those clutches and using them for a breather. He needs to push out and be more aggressive. Yeah, that's probably true. And uh, the problem is both is such a big, strong guy. He kind of wraps you up and he grabs that arm. That would be a bear hug. Yeah. Halfway through this round and uh, Holyfield's had a better round than he's had in any of the previous rounds. And when he pops that jab, he can step in and get the right hand. That left jab is going to have to be a big-time weapon for him. And what a difference in both of them. As he walks back now, not punching, with his hands lower. So it's almost as if... Boy, this fight is following his script. Yeah. Hey, Holyfield. Left by Holyfield. The crowd lifting his spirits. Both are continuing to hold. Fighters separated. Minute left in round number six. Holyfield, a little bit more energized fighter in this round. Works that right hand in the body, a good shot. Whole different look to this fight here in this round. It's Holyfield, while he's not attacking with great combinations, he is landing better oh, shots than right hand by Holyfield. That left led it. It's a nice combination by the 47-year-old former world champion. Now you see Botha just kind of tossing his punches off. Holyfield working inside, showing a lot of power. Clearly his best round of the fight. Botha just stopped in this round, really. 
We talked about it. This is the part in the fight where he usually has issues, and he's having them. Is he hibernating? Oh, big right hand by Holyfield. And follows in. Both of very happy to get out of this round number six. Two different fights, rounds one through five and round six. We'll see how Evander Holyfield was able to do much better in the last round. The left hand very low from both, and two right hands get home for Holyfield. He had landed a couple of very good combinations before that. And obviously Tommy Brooks, his trainer, uh, is going to be happier with that effort. And now we're left with the question of whether Franz Botha can um, regain some of that momentum. And how much does he have left in his tank? Not unheard for a fighter to take a round off, but unless he can come back and make a very concerted effort in round number seven, he could be in trouble. And there's a case how at the heavyweight level, a fight can turn very quickly. Round number seven, Franz Botha in the black trunks, of Andrew Holyfield in the white trunks. The four-time former world champion taking it to both in that round. And it continues here in round number seven. And what's, what's nice about this part for Holyfield is the number of punches he's throwing. You know, he looked very, very, to be blunt, he looked old for five rounds. And part of the reason he's looked better is because Botha's allowed him. Oh, nice right by Botha. But Holyfield has taken advantage by at least throwing a lot of punches. And that's what you, I think, would hope to see from him. Now, with Holyfield being more active as he opened himself up, is there opportunity for Botha to counter and get that big well, shot at him? and we saw the right hand by Botha land, but it didn't stop Holyfield from coming forward. So you're right. There is an opportunity here. Both of them a low shot. Now Holyfield connecting with three big laps to the head. Both are clearly hurt. Boy, that looks like a wounded buffalo right there. He wants to tell Holyfield nice punches, but guess what? You have to punch back. <laughs> the crowd coming to life here at the Thomas and Mack. A scene in some of the great fights in boxing history. Boy, big right hand by both of them, powering into Holyfield's style. Well, this last couple rounds is a little more what we had hoped we would get, at least for a portion of this fight, and it's been fun to watch. Oh, both uh, showing surprising quickness, threw Holyfield off. This round started out all Holyfield. We saw it as a continuation of round six. Yet both are starting to step back. Al, do you have the feeling this thing could go 12? Well, you know, the next few rounds are really going to be important, especially for Franz Botha. He's throwing a lot more arm punches, though, now, and that's a sign of fatigue. And, of course, his hands are very low. Holyfield, with a pretty good three or four minutes of effort, has slowed down dramatically in the last minute and a half of round number seven. Crowd reacting to a right hand by Holyfield. Holyfield's ripping the body much better now as well. He's throwing more meaningful body punches. Holyfield, as is the custom, closing out the round well. And that'll do her for seven rounds of boxing from the Thomas and Mack in Las Vegas, Nevada. Trip Mitchell, Al Bernstein calling the action. The White Buffalo goes into the corner and takes on some sustenance. What are his corner people telling him? Well, you know, I think in his case, He's got to go back to a couple things that will work for him. One is the overhand right, and uh, he's been trying it, but it hasn't been getting there. 